What's up guys? Welcome back to Gapmire Flies. Today we're tying a scud. All right. Starting out with the fire hole 520 size 14 and golded gold slotted tungsten bead and you know, silk waxed semperfly a dot this is kind of a fluorescent orange color and we're going to be tying a tan scud a lot of the alpine lakes that i like to fish are just packed full of these things and the fish love eating them so you can also find scuds and a lot of tail waters and things like that so you can tie them in whatever color you want to match your naturals and size but today we're going a tan 14 so we're going to start our thread out cut the excess and i'm going to jam a little bit of thread up behind this bead keep it from moving too much we'll kind of further lock it in as we go the other thing I'm gonna do really quick is turn my hook in the vise so that we can tie our tail in so we'll come down around the bend a bit not too far but a little ways and then we're gonna use partridge for the tail so this is just a partridge pelt I have. Pick a feather off of here. Clean it up a little bit. So a nice little partridge feather. And then I'm going to come in and grab, I don't know, six or seven of these. Line up the tips and get them out of there. I want this about a hook gap in length. There we go. And then we'll just tie all the way forward. Don't worry about that not being super smooth just yet. We'll smooth it up a little here, but doesn't need to be perfect. Next thing we need is some small amber wire. Pull off about a six inch piece. That's probably more like a four inch piece, but it will do. We'll jam that up into the bead and we'll tie it down the far side away from our body. There we go. And then one more material to tie in is some thin skin. Just all black will work just fine. This is kind of a mottled black and tan. And I'll cut a piece that's about maybe a little bit over a half a hook gap and we're going to tie this in we want it to buckle around the hook just like so and we'll tie it in all the way down to the tail and back up then we're going to make our dubbing mixture all right i've got three dubbings here some tan south scud, some shrimp pink ice dub, and some SLF spiky squirrel. And the color on this is squirrel belly. So I'm just gonna take out a piece of the squirrel belly like so, drop it on the table, take out a little bit of the shrimp pink, and I'm actually gonna take some scissors and just cut this up a little bit. Just like that. Drop that down. And then a little bit of this tan South Scud dub. 
just like so. And then we'll just take it and kind of start mixing it with our fingers. And then we'll take our comb tool and just kind of start combing it and just mix it all up. Boom. Now we've got this cool little shaggy, little bit sparkly hunk of dubbing here. Dubbing is made, so we are back to the fly. One thing I want to do is grab the tan dubbing here. So just that tan South Scud dubbing. And we're going to make a really thin underlayer here just to kind of cover up our underbody. It's just really dark. And so what we're going to do is just start making a little dubbing noodle. And there we go. And this doesn't even really need to be perfect either. You'll see why in a minute, but just a kind of a nice thin layer. This is all going to get covered up. And then we're going to make ourselves a little dubbing loop here. And then wrap forward. So now we need our dubbing twister and that little dubbing mixture that we just made. And I'm going to just start loading this loop with some little, uh, just clumps of this dubbing all the way down about an inch and a half, maybe two inches. Just a nice bit and you can always spread it a little bit once you've got it in there too and then we're going to take that and give it a good twist and now we've got this nice little shaggy bit of dubbing here and we're just going to start running that up the body you can kind of gauge, you know, a lot of times scuds are a little bit fatter in the middle. So if you want to take kind of an extra wrap in the middle section, and as you can see, this is really messy right now. And that's good. That's what we want. We'll clean this up as we go here, but that's kind of, that's kind of what we want. Now we're going to take and pull all of this stuff down and bring our thin skin up over the top and tie it off. Come in and cut that as close as we can, just like so. And then we're going to rib. We want to make sure that while we're ribbing this, we don't trap a bunch of these dubbing fibers up onto our thin skin because we're going to make a shell back out of UV resin. So four or five ribs is plenty and we'll tie this wire off a few wraps and break it free there we go now the tying portion of this is pretty much done 
We're just gonna give it a whip finish really quick. That orange will create a really nice fluorescent hot spot. Also, scuds when they get injured or are dying can turn shades of orange. So, there we go. And then we're going to cut that. Now, last thing we're going to do is go with some solar res thin over the whole back of this thing. So we'll just put down a glob and spread, spread it all out. Trying to make it nice and even over those thread wraps, up over the bead. This will just add, just adds a really cool effect, but it also adds quite a bit of durability. And there we go. We'll just cook that. I think my light needs a new battery. That's all right. But there you go. Kind of get the whole view of the scud. You see how that orange really fluoresces in there. And then that amber wire just makes some cool accents against the dark shell back. Anyways, there you go. It's good. That's how I tie pretty much all of mine. If I was going to fish it, you know, in the river, I might have these in 18s and 20s. If I'm fishing it on still waters, a lot of times it's 12s, 14s, maybe a few 16s. But that's a good one. Really cool little scud, not too difficult to tie, and definitely catches fish. So, anyways, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.